Three, two, one, clap. What's up, Pokemon Trading Card Game fans? Welcome to episode 129 of Special Conditions, a Pokemon TCG podcast where our love for competing and collecting collide. Today is February... No, I'm just kidding. Yes, it's February 1st, but it's Wednesday, February 1st, 2023. I'm one of your hosts, Adam Tuttle, and beside me, I have Justin Keller. How are you? Good, good. And, you know, it's been a little cold recently, but... uh I'm sure you yeah, don't what happened in Texas? In you know, it's this thing called uh, we don't have snow plows. So when it does snow or a wintry mix, we can't really deal with it. That's basically, rough. The Basically, the mantra is, you know, if it does anything, the next day it'll be 60, so it'll just melt. Well, it's been three days in a row of mixture of sleet, rain, sleet, rain. But then it's been under 30 this whole time, so now it's just a sheet of ice everywhere. No, that sounds like a slippery hazard. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, that sounds like a new special condition, frozen. I mean, it's not technically in the VGC. That's an actual thing. You can freeze. Mm -hmm. But in the TCG, there's no freezing. There's just paralyzed. Yeah. They wah, need to wah. do that. They need to invest in a new, in a new mechanic. Hmm. One that sticks around hmm. forever. Hmm. Well, Just saying. Pokemon. Now, is there? I'm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> is there four or five special conditions? Uh, paralyzed, sleep, confused, burn, poison. Five. Five. Okay. All right, Justin. On today's episode, we've got kind of a jam-packed episode. I know when we started this this uh, the studio in Riverside. Jam. Does that mean it's you noticed that there was a time? lot of notes? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a video episode, so if you don't want to continue listening and you want to see our beautiful faces, you can find us, I'm pretty sure anywhere, but pretty much YouTube, I think, not plugging the channel. Pokemon Professor Network! Uh, but we're going to prepare you for Orlando Regionals. We're going to talk about decks you should have your eye on and what you should be playtesting against. Uh, we're going to talk about deck building just kind of for beginners. Cause if you've been listening to the show, I'm sure you have some sort of concept of which cards you like. So we'll, we'll try to figure out how to use some of them. And then, uh, we'll open a couple packs. Justin said he didn't have any, but I happen to have one of these fancy, uh, Galarian birds two pack. It's not really fancy, but on the it back, it says, give your collection a boost. It reminds me of Star Fox. Use the boost to get through. <laughs> um, oh, good times. Yeah, great times, honestly. And then we're going to talk about the burned special condition. How does that sound? Sounds good. Awesome. All right. <laughs> so we will jump straight into Orlando. Justin, have you? are you going to Orlando? You know, at one point I thought about it, but uh, it wasn't in the cards this year. Okay. And so for those listening, Orlando Regionals is February 3rd through the 5th. I can poke Ken and hope he gets this out beforehand so you can have this knowledge. But if not, I apologize. And these are the things you should be testing against. <laughs> There'll be regionals after this still in this format, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Okay. So if you were going today, what would you be playing? Like if you just, if you got dropped off and you were right there and you had like any deck in your hand, what would you do? <sighs> hmm. You're thinking too long. You just got to snap it. Uh, Reggie's. Reggie's. Okay. I would you play know, Shadow I, Rider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not because... I, I I don't know. Honestly, it's just one of those decks where I can just have fun with it. Mm -hmm. And if I lose, I lose. I'm not going to cry about it. Yeah. It has draw power. It has high attack power. It's, it's almost like having a little bit of draw with Lapras and being able to stack energies and mm -hmm. do a lot of damage. And then I also really enjoy Cresselia. So that's what I would play. Not that I would win, but... 
it w- I would have fun with it. And that's, that would be my goal. Yeah. I already did the whole play BDIF with Lugia and that was uh, fun to say the least. <laughs> but that, if you recall, old listeners, I went three and three and three. So, you know, it was fun, but it was a lot of time. It was a lot of grueling matches and the mirror match is not fun. So, uh, yeah. And it's hard. It's hard. Cause, um, back in the day, I, you know, forever ago, I was playing dark Cry, uh-huh. and that was just mirror match after mirror match. There were so many dark cries. It was just Keldeo rush in, use your dark patches, get a bunch of energies, hit, do 90 and then 30 to a bench Pokemon, 90 and then 30, 90 and then 30. And then it was just, uh, I believe the sable eye to recycle item cards. It was just, it was a lot. But mm-hmm. I, I did face a lot of the same deck, which it gets it gets boring sometimes. That's why I like this format. There are a lot of good decks. There are a lot of cheeky differences you can make to spice up your lists, and uh, and we've seen a lot of it. I'm I'm continually surprised by cards that I thought were left for dead that show up in these lists, and I'm just like. I didn't even think that card was playable. Like recently, have you seen that people are playing uh, Skyla in Lugia? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Don't get oh. any any item card or any trainer card or whatever. That's yeah. that's really good. <laughs> and if less people are playing cards like Marnie, which mm-hmm. I don't know what the I, like, I haven't looked at too too many lists, but. I feel like Marnie's on the decline because I don't get my hand Marnied very often in PTCGL. No, which is why I enjoyed playing that um, Wheezing Eternatus deck because you played three copies Judge, three copies Marnie just to constantly disrupt people because most people are playing either Lost Box or Lugia so they're just constantly drawing into more cards, doing whatever they want. And sometimes you just got to say, no, you can't yeah. do what you want. I, I'm sorry, but you can't. Yeah. Um, I was looking at some articles, looking at a lot of like the Limitless TCG tournaments that have gone on and just compiled basically a list of things that you should be prepared to fight because you will most likely see a lot of these same decks. Uh-huh. Uh, the first one being Mew V Max. Surprise, surprise. Surprise. I mean, if you haven't played this against it or know how to play against it, that, that's something you need to know. <laughs> uh, include Drapion. Include Drapion. That's Step a in the right single direction. card counter. Uh, you could play cards like Path to the Peak to slow them down because they are using abilities with the Genesect. Well, have you got, have you played against any uh, Mew decks that are playing Path themselves? It's wild. Uh, yeah, I have actually. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, I don't just... understand. I get it, but I don't. Because somehow they like, I don't remember exactly how, but they they draw into like Lost Vacuum or something, where they can pop it, pop the stadium, and then they just continue about their turn. I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking about Lost Vacuum. Lost Box, Lost Box is that deck is still ridiculous. It's still viable, and it's and very there's, good. There's so many different options. There's so many different options. So many different ways to play it. If you had to pick a way for yourself to play it, which way would you play? I it? really like just going for Rayquaza and making that like the main attacker. Yeah, I, I really like the idea of being able to just attach a bunch of energies and do boatloads of damage and be able to knock mm-hmm. out AV max because that's not easy to do. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're D Alga V star. <laughs> <laughs> it's like chronosphere or whatever it is. And then the next attack, just like, no, I love, I love in, in TCG live that I, I always get that. And they always have a V max. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, you do realize that if I attack you next turn, I get to go again. Yeah. <laughs> and then I attack them again. <laughs> They're like, oh, no, three prize cards. And then yeah, they, I think they I would... have to counter me. They have to be able to one-shot me back. And nine out of ten times, it's hard. 
unless they have a Charizard Radiant, uh, which is super scary for me because that mm-hmm. sometimes they only need one energy. Yeah, luckily Lost Box isn't really playing Charizard anymore. Now I have seen some where they play as much as a two-two line uh, of uh, the Rayquaza Radiant and the Raikou Radiant, which is probably more my speed. That way, yeah, because you know with Rayquaza you have to discard your energies every time. And do you mean the, the ma- amazing rares? Yeah. Oh, that's what I meant. The amazing rares. <laughs> okay. I was like, because you can only have one radiant. <laughs> <laughs> you can't Sorry. Me. I'm rule sharking you. Uh, no. Du, 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 du. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, What's no, next cause, you know, with, it does 120 to the active and then 120 to the bench. Plus you're not discarding. Yeah. So if you can't knock that out, yeah, I, I'm f- almost certain you're having two Pokemon knocked out, or at least one of an mm. important attacker. I mean, if you're um, going against another Lost Box, you pop two of them. And you pop two of their main attack. <laughs> yeah. Or you just get rid of Comfies, and that just yeah. slows them down. Uh, next on the list, Lugia V-Star. Mm-hmm. This one's weird, because again, you can play pretty much anything. You can play it with Gengar VMAX. Which is what, if I was playing Lugia, this is what I would go with Gengar VMAX. Just because it's out there. People aren't expecting it. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> and you play around with different special energies that people aren't used to, like the hiding energy or the um, single strike energy. Yeah, you can play it with Flying Pikachu. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, Lugia is just, if it gets out, it's uh, it's hard to beat. Mm-hmm. Unless it gets out against itself, then you tie. Yes. <laughs> um, another deck that you should be aware of is Regigigas. Mm-hmm. This deck still blows my mind. You know, it was fun. Like, we saw that first list. What was it? Like, last summer. We were like, oh, it actually took down, like, a 1,000 or 2,000 person tournament in Japan. Like, it got first. I was like, okay, that's the best it'll do. And then, like, continually does well in regionals. I'm like, okay, I guess it's just staying. Yeah, it, it's it's just been so consistent throughout this yeah. whole time. It's kind of insane. It's kind of just like Mew VMAX. It's the deck that just won't go away. Yeah. And that's... It really shows something, like, when they really... Like, Reggie Gigas was, like, a printed deck. Kind of like how Mew VMAX was a printed deck. Like, where... A bunch of the same cards came out in the same set, like, oh, this is how they synergize. Yeah. Um, and then, well, that's the same thing with Lost Box. Mm-hmm. You know, most of those cards came out in the same set. Yeah. Um, I know personally, I got third place in a state championship. No, it was it was it states? Oh, no, I think it was second place. Second place in a state championships in Londonderry, New Hampshire at the Game Castle with Regigigas. It was you played like a 2-1 line of Dialga G and then the Dialga G level X. I don't know. Level X is you had to be in the active in order to evolve on top of it. I don't really remember how the deck ran, but it was just insane. Then you played Regigigas and Regigigas level X and then you played all the Uxies. So you played Mesprit to stop abilities on your opponent's turn the next turn. Or no, that was Mesprit. Yeah. And then Uxies, you play down, draw until you have seven cards. And then you could evolve Uxie into the Uxie level X. That let you look at the top two, take one, put one at the bottom instead of to the lost zone. And then you played the Azelf to look at your prizes. And I think you could rearrange them in any order that you wanted to. And those are from, I think, Legend Awakening. Oh my god, this is dating me really... <laughs> well, I just looked up that Red Gigas Level X. It's from 2008. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Diamond and Pearl promo, so... Uh... <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah. So it's... I, I, I think I'm like one or two cards away from having that entire deck complete. Like, I rebuilt it from my oh, deck nice. list that I had written. It's... yeah tucked away cool. next to my glass trophy which okay, is now you're uh, gonna have to explain to people what states is no, no one knows okay what so is. state championships uh that was each state had a state championship oh so you'd have 
you'd have your locals, which would be instead of to like start the season, you'd have battle roads mm-hmm. and battle roads. You could pretty much just have at every single league. Those were just everywhere. And then you mm-hmm. had cities and those were the next level up and more competitive. And a lot of people from the whole state would try to go to each city and it was typically the bigger cities that they had them. And then States was like that, that big event that a lot of people went to for their States. Um, and mm. each of, each of these events had different, um, championship point payouts depending. And, uh, and yeah, and back in the day you got glass trophies, glass, glass. Um, I would love to show you, but, uh, I'd have to like yeah, get yeah. up in Another my cabinet time. and Another yeah. time. not right now, but Regigigas, I love Regigigas as a, as a deck. Mm-hmm. I haven't actually played this one. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that I wouldn't love it. I just, yeah. <laughs> it just surprises me that this is, uh, this is as good as it is where it can go like X and O out of, out of like 10 rounds. Like it just, it doesn't make mm. sense, but it's good. Yeah. Uh, Derulodon V max is still a deck. You can pair with Arceus. People are playing it with, uh, Eternatus radiant <laughs> Eternatus. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and then Gudra V star as well. Yeah. Like another, de- you know, it's just, these are the decks that you should have your eye on. These are the decks that, show up consistently and yeah. uh, you just, you have to know how to play against them. I, yeah. Especially and I, this weekend. And you got to really kind of like read into the meta and like what's showing up like an online recently and kind of what's showed up at more recent tournaments that we're still in the same format and probably choose like the top three decks that you know, so that you know, have a, you have a known strategy. Okay. If I'm playing against Mew V max, here is my strategy. I'm going to search out X and we're going to start doing this. Uh, or if you're going against lost box, how to deal with that? Like you may, maybe you don't want to bench certain two prize Pokemon or how, how are you doing with Lugia V star? Are you going for weakness? What are you doing? Yeah. And then, you, and then you got to look too. like, are there common weaknesses from the looks of things? Not really. Not What's good. Really. weak to Fairy? No, uh, nothing because it's dragon. Nothing. It's dragon. <laughs> What's Derulodon week two because it's dragon? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Regigigas? Fighting. Do you see any fighting in the format? No. Well, and it's a one prizer, <laughs> so it's like. No, hey. I know. I know. It's weak to its own little Reggie Rock. Yep. And then Lugia is weak to lightning. Well, Mew is weak to dark. Yeah. Again, are there any lightning decks? No. Are there any dark decks? No. That's why these decks are thriving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, Eternatus is still showing up. I know you had said the Radiant Eternatus because that's mm-hmm. bringing out like Kira VMAX and mm-hmm. Derulodon VMAX. And people are sneaking these out cheekily. Turn one. And making moves. Yeah, turn one. <laughs> but um, Eternatus, you know, that's still a deck. Mm-hmm. it's not as fast, which is why it's not topping, but it is something that you should be aware of. Yeah. Um, there is a new deck that has shown up. Rotom V star. Yeah. Justin, can you go into this? <laughs> Cause the last, the last time I heard about Rotom, uh, it was, it, it was like a glass looking thing. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> Do you happen to have a list on hand? I uh, I don't. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> I know. These are things that I need to have in the notes. I apologize to the listeners, but to the viewers. Yeah, let me look it up real quick. We're just gonna we're just gonna keep going. But yeah, so I mean essentially Rotom V Star, you're trying to get a bunch of tools in the discard, and then your attack does I want to say it's 40 plus... Or I thought it was 40. 80. I think the V-Star is 80. Oh, it's 80. You're right. It's plus 80. 40 for each tool. Yeah, the discard put from the discard into the lost zone. So you can, like, hit crazy numbers. Um, and so if 90% of the format's Lugia, that's a good play. 
Mm-hmm. But if it's not, you're going to be getting rid of a lot of tools in one turn. I mean, the beauty of this deck is that you can, like, you don't you don't have like a an X that you or like a number like a cap. It, you can just hit whatever number you need to. So like against Gudra, because they just keep healing and healing and healing. You just wait till you have enough damage on board and just wipe them out. But yeah, here, the the wait. the question is, how consistently can you knock out? Can you knock out three of them? Let's see. I just pulled up a uh, a list that did pretty well in the tournament of doom. Eats six almonds. Mm. Yeah, that was from this uh, this past week, January twenty okay. seventh. So it ran Shout a four to three the line of Rotom V Star. Couple of crowbats, um, an Orangaroo V. Why is that in there? Um, let's see, Dancy, you know, to help for help set up some research, Serena, you know, um, and then just a bunch of tool cards. And there's shopping a lot center, of good ones too. Shopping center to help you get them out. Yeah, well, they also there's... ran two of the Sky Seal Stone. Now, okay. do you remember what well, Sky Seal Stone does? I don't. Um, the Pokemon V this card is attached to gains this V Star power. The ability is called Star Order. During your turn, you use this ability. During this turn, if your opponent's active Pokemon V Star, active Pokemon V Max, is knocked out by damage from an attack from your basic Pokemon V, take one more prize card. Whoa! Okay. That makes sense. So that makes sense. Okay. Hit big numbers with the V. It requires, you know, one extra tool, right? Yeah. And you use this extra prize. Wow. And with a V max, you can take four prize cards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's wild. And then, uh, really chomp on that mute. Yeah. <laughs> so, in TCG Live, I do want to talk about an experience that I've had, or in my experience playing recently. I think I'm I'm only in like the like the 390, 400 range. Like I keep going from Raboot to like Snubble, or mm-hmm. I don't know how that all works right now. I'm playing, but not like hardcore. Because I was I was like scrolling through, and I was like, well, man, I have to play this like nonstop to get all the way to the top. And I, I can tell you I'm not by the top, but there's, I, I've just seen so much mill tank and it's like, I'm playing Dialga uh, V star right now. So I had to change my strategy mm-hmm. into playing the baby Dialga from celebrations. Mm. It has a similar attack um, for three colorless energies does I think 60 plus 20 more for each metal attached to it. So you can get to where you need to. So it's like 120 yep. for 60 three plus energies. 20 for each metal. Yep. Yeah. So you're doing 120 just by attacking with it. So that's going to knock out your mill tank. Uh, if you attach a fourth one, that's going to knock out Decidueye. Decidueye is also something that I'm, I'm seeing. I don't understand it. Are you sure it wasn't the- just Cody from the other night? No, 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 no. So that's that's the exception. I played Cody. He should have won. He just played down extra bench Pokemon that he shouldn't have and uh, didn't send out the Pokemon that couldn't be knocked out by a V. So shout out to Cody. <laughs> GG's. <laughs> but honestly, like in my, in my play testing, I have played against several. Okay, several. I say like several. It's probably like two or three, but I played against a couple of of Decidueye, and I've played against like four or five decks with Mill Tank, mm. and I'm like, I'm tired of losing. This is this is so frustrating. <laughs> and then I put in the Baby Dialga, and I haven't uh. seen one. But the Baby Dialga has put in work. I think for one Metal Energy, I can grab an item card from the trash <laughs> discard, put it in my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> this is all off memory. <laughs> well, it's it's a it's a colorless, but yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Still, we're not know it is metal. You're right. Yeah, but you can get an item card. Like, if you need another metal saucer to be able to swing f- with Star Chronos next turn, like, it helps. It does. Mm-hmm. So, I would just say be aware that people are playing Miltank and Decidueye 
and just have some sort of strategy for that. Because a lot of decks, as you can see in the ones that we had just listed, Mew VMAX, Lost Box, Lugia V-Star, Regigigas, Darulodon VMAX, Gudra VMAX, Eternatus, Ro Rotom V-Star. There's a lot of Vs. There's a lot of VMAX. There's a lot of V-Stars. So if they can get you on a technicality like this, that's gonna feel that's a feels bad moment. So just have an out to one of these Pokemon that block you. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Good no. luck to all the trainers headed to Orlando. Wish you the best of luck and safe travels. Justin, do you have anything else on that? I was thinking, I wonder if, because, you know, like Lost Box doesn't have any uh, V-Star attacks. I wonder if they're going to try and fit in that Sky, uh, Sky Seal Stone and maybe just slide one V in there for just a surprise gotcha moment later. Yeah, honestly. They they put it on a Stoutland V. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, I actually take an additional prize, and I already and I take an additional oh prize. My God. That basic okay, I gotta comfy. Try this now. <laughs> yeah, that basic comfy. <laughs> I'll take three prize cards. Thank you. <laughs> well, what is this? Greed and VMAX? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> what is that? Nom nom gimme gimme or something. <laughs> okay. Moving on. We are going to open up a couple packs. As I had mentioned or alluded to earlier, I have this little pack here comes with a story from mm. a walmart employee oh <laughs> you do um, that before or after the break we'll do, we'll do the story after the break but we'll open up the packs first cool if that's cool with you yeah and you said you don't have a pack what? no okay so i'm gonna open both these one for myself and one for you since you don't oh that came off really easily like like, as if somebody just glued that. That's what that looks like. <laughs> like, there was no even, like, rip. I didn't even rip it. You know, maybe okay. they're just doing you a favor. So it's not as... Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, they no, were Sometimes just, you gotta course. go like, I'm going to rip it off. So it comes with this uh, this really lovely Zero Aura coin. Nice, nice. Now, what do you do with all your coins? Uh, I have this bin. It's like a, a two-compartment bin. Uh, no, okay. So that's for energies. Ah. But basically, I flip a coin. If it gets tails, I do the Macarena. And if heads, I throw it behind me. Mm. No. I do have a two-compartment bin. I throw in the the wider section. Mm -hmm. I throw all of my dice. Or no, all of my coins. All mm -hmm. of my pins. Any of the acrylic markers. Anything weird like that. Mm-hmm. And then all the dice are in the compartment above it. Yeah. I guess that one spot is the only spot that looked like it was actually sealed. <laughs> That's so strange. All right. Wish us luck. We yeah. we need to get... So that bird something. art on the back made me think of, like, you know, the new promo cards are coming out for Crown Zenith for the upcoming releases. Okay, but this... that's not what this is. I got... An enhanced two-pack blister. Enhanced. Oh, so I've got two of them. I've got two of them. So I'm going to keep one because I want one of these. Because <laughs> I'm I'm cool like that. But I got two, and I got two because we're doing the show right now. Yeah. And the listeners deserve it. For an enchanted two-pack blister, Galarian Articuno, Galarian Zapdos, and Galarian Moltres, the code is 4 w G two W N R V K X four Z M. Good luck. Yes. Yeah. I don't need to show you that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so it came with an astral radiance, blah, blah, which blah, I love astral radiance and a fusion strike. So we're Ugh. talking about Mu V Max. So I a treated fusion strike when good to you. No, but I tr I am looking for a Genesect. Okay, mm. just a regular Genesect. Yeah. I traded somebody at my work mm -hmm. for their Genesect. I had put it in my breast pocket, and I took it off, and it's it made its way into the washer machine and washed and dried, and by the time I found it, 
it was no longer a playable TCG card. <laughs> You'll have to post that in the Discord later what it looks like. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think I just threw it away. Oh, that's fair. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. All right, so we're opening um, Fusion Strike. So for here, Fusion Strike, I'm going to put this code in the show notes. Oh. So if you're listening, you just got that code. Now, if you're listening again or watching... Go to our iTunes or wherever you can find this. Look at the show's description and see if you can get the code. I mean, Good in luck. theory, it's in the YouTube description, right? In theory. In theory. Okay, it's a white code, so you know this is going to be fire. Mm-hmm. Yes, but I'm going to put that code there. The listeners didn't need to know. <laughs> no, they didn't know. <laughs> All right, so we got a darkness energy. Darkness. What is that? I don't even know. Senescorch? Can you scoot Sen- it a little further this way? This way? Yeah, not that far. What? Why is it a Cinescorch? Isn't that supposed to be a rare? Uh, that's a... Uh, some spiral sort of energy. energy. Spiral energy. <laughs> I mean, fusion I, strike. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to, like, move around my, my microphone here. Well, doesn't your microphone on a boom? Yes, but I don't want to move it. Like, gosh, okay. Isn't that the whole point? Yeah, but then I can't see myself opening. Man, <laughs> I'm just... I'll just read them to you. Fusion strike. Tur- okay, you're still off the screen. <laughs> How am Turnator. I off the screen? Tutanita. Makuhita. Pepper. Sawalo. Skrr. Jinx. Clarion Darumaka. And. Maractus. Oh. With the so you know, shake. it's uh, uh, yeah, we we did really good there. That yeah. was a yeah, that was a really good one. Yeah. Anyway, now we are going to open Astral Radiance, and now the viewers are going to get the code. So, D- thank don't you for don't tell me the the color. I'm not telling you the color. I'm just going to show you whatever. Oh oh, I'm supposed to do that. Okay, little a little further back. Okay. There we go. All yeah. right. Good luck. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, four. So remember, right. since we're shooting vertical, it kind of cuts the side of the video. Yeah, I'm trying. All right. Metal energy. Fish chop. Per ugly. Per ugly. As of. Chatot. Thai. Drifloon. Sudo. Magnemite, Kirk, Kirk. Ooh, Ooh oh, what is that? Yeah. Trainer a Galarian Galli- Articuno V alt art? No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's totally so it. good looking. I love it. Oh. Hit me with swine. Okay. Wait. Holy but hey, cow. how appropriate. You got the Galarian Articuno from your uh, special birds pack. What was the name of the pack? I don't know. Birds of Power. Hold birds on. of Prey. This is, this is pretty darn cool. I need to get it into a sleeve, though. Sleeve, sleeve me, blazer. Wow. That is such a good-looking card. I was like, there's no character arts, but there are. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Astral Radiance has always been good to me. I think, was it, I think it's Astral Radiance that I was trying to, like... That YouTube video with the community day Teddy Ursa, I was trying to pull a regular <laughs> rare Ursa Luna, and I couldn't do it. I don't know. I think I had like nine packs. I had an ETB <laughs> plus. I, it, I was just like, there's no way. I was like, how do we not get the Ursa Luna V or the Ursa Luna rare? It mm-hmm. just didn't make sense. With all the possibilities of reverse hollows, regular rares, like dud packs, like I'm okay with the dud packs. I just wanted the community to do Pokemon. Come on! And I did not get it. You're like, oh, and I pulled up a champ all tarred. Oh, how terrible! Ugh. All right. So for the video watchers, we're gonna take a audio break, and for the audio listens, listeners, we'll be break. <laughs> if I could speak <laughs> the proper Englishes, uh, we'll be back right after this break. Do 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 do
And we are back. Justin, how was that break for you? Twas good. Twas good. Twas like 30 seconds, but... <laughs> not, behind the, not behind the curtains. All right. <laughs> uh, we do just got to get through housekeeping real quick. Uh, this pa- this podcast is powered by Patreon. Check ours out over at patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor, where you can support this show, this show for as little as a dollar a month. That dollar is going to get you access to our Patreon-exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. All patrons are eligible to participate in our Pokemon Go and TCG Live, live tournaments. <laughs> uh, Registration is in the Discord. We hope to see you there. Huge thank you to our gym leaders, Absolutely Ryan, Austin Zard, The Cole, Sue, Big Zao Minus, Hall the Counselor, Grant, DJ Wonderbread, Mythical Hitch, Paul, and Jamal. Big shout out to our executive producer, Tish Smith. Can shout you come out, back to the Tish, to the Monday Tish. night Zoom calls? Yeah, please. please. <laughs> <laughs> we have not seen you and everybody was wondering where you are. I, I so, think she works until I know, like I know, but thirty or something. <laughs> We'd love to see you back on the on the Patreon Zoom yeah, call. Yeah, so uh, do us a favor and just take day off of work just to talk to us. Yeah, just yeah. <clears throat> just you're a little sick. <clears throat> you gotta <laughs> gotta leave work gotta an hour go, early. Yeah, gotta leave <clears throat> early. You're just not feeling well. You ate something. Didn't agree with you. But if Patreon is not your thing, you can still support the show by shopping at tcgplayer.com using the link in the description. It helps us out and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, anything extra, actually, because you're buying the card. Yeah, well. If you're just using our link, that's all. All right, Justin. Here we are. We're going to talk about building a deck. Wait, what about your Walmart story? Oh, oh, the Walmart story. I totally forgot. So somebody stops, and they're like, can I help you find anything? I'm like, nah, just looking. Mm -hmm. And then proceeds to tell me all about how there is a... Pokemon buyout. Everybody is is scared buying or panic buying mm-hmm. was the proper term that he used. He's like, everything is like all the ETBs are gone. They they haven't given us any ETBs, and they're just everything's gone because uh-huh. Pokemon announced that they're not printing any more Sword and Shield stuff. I mean, they have to, right? Because they have to move on. That's just, I mean, that's the new life. stuff doesn't come out for still a couple months. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm ready to move on. Like as much as I enjoyed Sword and Shield, it's time for something new. Yeah, because Sword and Shield TCG uh, English expansion was released on February seventh. 2020 mm. three years ago almost to the day that was i mean give was, six days that but was pre the unspeakable that was pre the unspeakable ADP. um but um it's just one of those things where it's been three years yeah they Time. they printed sword and shield to the cows come home. Okay? <laughs> they gave us packs of... They, they they just wanted us to have base set Sword and Shield so badly that they gave it to us for free in a dual pack blister. Do you remember those? No, I, I wasn't buying then. Oh, I, okay, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, no, I do... Because I, I was with Darkness of Blaze, right? Yes. Yep. I did. I did. Yes. So I think I still have either one or two of these still sealed. Mm. But they were such a deal. It was so nice to just go to the store, get a whole bunch of these, and then have content to be able to yeah. open every single day. I'm with glad I was listening to this podcast at the time because I remember you saying it. You're like, "Oh, this is the deal. This is you gotta buy it." <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you listened because uh, yeah. that was such a good deal. And I remember pulling some fire from those packs. 
Yeah, I mean, that's where I pulled my first Hyper Rare before I knew what Hyper Rares were. It was the Radiant, uh, or not Radiant. Like, what is this Rainbow Textured card? I don't it understand. Was the, it was Eternatus. It was the Rainbow Eternatus. Oh, that's so sweet. I don't I don't think I have a Rainbow Eternatus. I think I have a PSA 10 graded one. Oh. So that's cool. I just, I like Eternatus a little bit, just a yeah. little bit. It's not my favorite, but it's like, it holds a, a soft spot in my heart because... Mm -hmm. I played, I played that card, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, like just a couple of days ago, I was at family dollars. Like, you know, I haven't stopped here in a while. It's just down the street from me and they still have sword and shield base set. Wow. The, the sleeved blisters. And they also wow. had like some of those terrible MJ holdings things. I was like, okay, just tell me how much it is. Cause like they had some chilling rain. It was $7. For yeah, like somebody, a single, hey, that's a rare set. They stopped printing it. You need to buy single it. Promo doesn't card. doesn't matter how plus, much it is. Like, oh, you need God. to buy it. No. Justin, I'm telling you, they're, everybody's panic buying. you got to buy it. Chilling pain. Another but one of I those just need to, to air this out. Okay? Listen. During the pandemic, sure. Pokemon purchased two additional, additional, not just mm. one, two additional printing facilities. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. Okay. So not only did they pump up their printing amid COVID, mm -hmm. those facilities have storage space because in a place that you are printing stuff to be packaged, to be stored until it needs to be shipped out. You're going to have a lot of storage. You're, you need space. So these are big buildings. They're not tiny little apartments that people are just printing random car. Like these are big giant factories. Okay. This is the wall to Walmart. This is the wall to Walmart of Pokemon. <laughs> like the front of the store where all the registers are. That's where they're printing the cards. The rest of the place is quality check areas making sure that like they have computers for the offices, making sure that they, you know, have everything down packed inventory, all that stuff, the rest storage. Yes. They're stopping printing. Okay. They're, like right now they're still printing. Like I, I can't imagine that they stopped printing. printing Scarlet and Violet or Crown Zenith. Yeah. Cr well, Crown Z I'm sure they've got one factory finishing up the last, like whatever they need to make numbers of crown zenith and then they already start like scarlet and violet already been announced we already know what we're getting they're 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 printing it period mm -hmm. that's the thing that's the set that's going to get them all their numbers to be one step up we know that they have tons of storage okay knowing that stop panic by <laughs> <laughs> these cards are being overprinted. Mm -hmm. They are printing money. That is that is how Pokemon is looking at this. They're printing yeah. money. And mm -hmm. I I mean this in the nicest way, no shade to Pokemon, but they are literally like printing money. When they print a Mewtwo Altart in Crown Zenith V Star, they're printing money. They're like, oh, this will go for a good price. Like they're mm -hmm. printing money, period. I mean, it's a piece of cardboard. The artist. It's a piece of cardboard with art. Yeah. It, I mean, again, I mean all this in the nicest way. <laughs> but stop panic buying. <laughs> like it's okay. <laughs> they're yeah. just like these random two packs that have Astral Radiance and Fusion Strike in them. We will have other products that sneak in these packs. Yeah. They like, have stored. You can still stuff. find cosmic eclipse, right? It's not. What did we find the other day? Celebration. That was the 25th anniversary. That was last year's set. Yeah. I see that. I see. I, I see. I keep seeing shining fates. Yeah. I saw a bunch of ETBs the other day. I saw the Charizard and the Sylveon <laughs> package set. Like my Barnes those we all thought had been discontinued and forgotten. Why did they show up in the store? Because those boxes are being like trickled. 
because yeah. they know what they're doing. They're just like, oh, well, we'll put this on the cart. You know, We'll let it go a couple months. We'll put another couple out there. They have three facilities that were printing during this time again. So they have a lot of stock to work through. Mm. So trust me when I say, stop panic buying. <laughs> There's no reason. It's not COVID. Yes. That, like if like say, okay, so if, if everybody's thinking that, then they need to start buying tons of toilet paper right now. <laughs> well, you know why you don't want to panic buy is because you don't want to get burned. Right. I mean, just look at everybody who was like, went crazy over the Charizard premium collection. Do a little research real quick. <laughs> bleep, bleep, bloop, the, the, bloop. The burn was a hint to go on to our next subject. No, I know. I know. But this story <laughs> would just, it just got me on edge. And I was like, I was Bust. like, oh. so just give me a second. I am going to look really quick. Charizard. Premium collection box. Okay, so on TCG Player, you can get it for a hundred dollars and ninety four cents. Mm. That's that's cheaper than Walmart selling it for a hundred and twenty. Now, did you own? Did you open one? I don't remember. I did not open one. I have not bought one because it. Every time I see it, I say to myself. There is a deli bird that's on eBay from the holiday collection. That's $120. Mm -hmm. It's out of my price range for buying a single deli bird PSA card. Like I really don't want to spend that. So I just remind myself that like I would totally cherish and love that card a lot more than this ultra premium hoop, hoop de la of Charizard. And so it just stops me from buying it. And even on a walmart.com, $99 and 45 cents. Save yourself a buck by buying on Walmart. We're not sponsored by Walmart, but, um, I'm just saying it's under MSRP because they have so many. I, I almost like lost it when I went into my local Walmart last week, I walked in and they had all the whole shelf was just these premium collection boxes just lined up the whole bottom shelf. It was so funny. And they were like too deep. And I was like, no way. And they well, had like one of like, making sure everyone things. who wants one gets one. <laughs> it's just wild. All right. But speaking of Charizard, let's move on to the special condition burn section of the show. Justin, now, how does it work? Essentially, they're all based on attacks or abilities or the occasional item card. Yes, but, but how does the mechanic work? The the that's how you like, you know, you get access to it. But essentially you're inflicted with burn, you put a burn counter on yourself. Those nice acrylic markers that you get yeah. in ETBs that we just kind of toss or throw in the recycle bin. And then so you need one. you're burned and then you during checkup you roll a die and then if it's heads you recover. Tails, and what happens don't. if you get tails? You don't. You're still burned. But do I take any damage? Yeah, 20 Is every it, time. 20? 20. It's bigger than poison. Oh, okay. Back in the day, I think it used to be 30. Did it? I think so. Oh, my goodness. Now you, now you got me. I'm going <laughs> to Google this. Jeez. We're a podcast. We're supposed to know our stuff. <laughs> I, I don't know anything older than Sword and Shield and like Tail End of Sun and Moon. Okay, let's see. All right, special conditions, blah, 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 burned. Yeah, uh, officially recognized in 2002 upon the release of the Expedition base set. The burn special condition is a similar to the poison special condition. A rule change in 2016 taken effect with the release of Sun and Moon altered the procedure for a burn. The burn special condition is derived from Neogenesis, in which Quilava's char attack caused a condition exactly like burn. Char was not recognized as a special condition. Yo, there's a... 
article that was put out yesterday from, it just says, buy a Pokemon on TCG Player Infinite called Rule Recap Special Conditions. Pokemon is back with a scoop on special conditions. Whoa. And we missed this? Okay. Yeah. And we didn't even get tagged in this? Come on. Yeah. uh, I'm going to have to, let's see. If I put it here in the chat, can you see that? I believe so. Yeah. Because I get the box and it says that, do that. Yep. Anyways, so I was curious to see if it talked about how poison changed. I mean, poison burned. Yeah, between turns, put two damage counters on a Pokemon, then flip a coin. If heads, remove the burn. Can retreat to remove burn condition. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of a neat neat article just talking about different um, special conditions. But anyways, is there... Did you want to talk about some of the current Pokemon that use the burn special condition? Hold on. Repeat that again. I was, I literally was like looking at a burn marker. Is there uh, <laughs> any Pokemon you wanted to highlight that use burn? Uh, honestly, I just want to go back to Hisuian Electrode. <laughs> <laughs> Cause the, no, the, the spicy curry, the spicy curry. Yeah, so if you didn't know, there's a trainer card called Spicy Curry. Spicy Season Curry. Spicy Season Curry. It's from Astral Radiance, number 151. You your burn. Active, person, you, you, active yeah. Pokemon is now burned. <laughs> heal 40 damage. I mean, the heal 40 is nice, but you're inflicting a special condition on yourself. Mm-hmm. But for no energies, the Hisuian Electrode can just do 100 damage based on mm-hmm. however many special conditions are affected on them. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Let me use some spicy curry and just do 100 damage. Your turn. And that's like turn one, you can do that. Now, my personal favorite is... So, the Arcanine from Rebel Clash has the ability called Warming Up if it's wearing a burning scarf, it gets a plus 100 HP. So your 130 HP Arcanine becomes 230 HP. Burning scarf reads, if the Pokemon, this car, uh, if the Pokemon, if this Pokemon takes damage from uh, another Pokemon's attack, it is inflicted with burn. I like that. I like that. Kind of like a, a Rocky helmet, but for burn. Mm hmm. Yeah, so you know, some beef plus some burn. I really enjoy Weeping Bell. Dangerous mucus. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may make your opponent's active Pokemon burned and poisoned. Womp womp. I mean, that's womp, three womp. damage counters. Yeah, they're going to take three damage. Imagine if and you now- had a Sui and Sneasler out. Oh. <laughs> these five damage counters. Now, declare it out for the people at home. I'm sure they're wondering. Do you have to flip a coin for both of these? The poison? Individually. Oh, no. Just po- the, oh, you're just right. The burn. Poison, you don't flip. No. <laughs> no, poison, you're stuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah, so another, let's see, another one that I liked was um, Butterfree from Fusion Strike. Oh, yeah. Stage two. Yep. But has the ability Tricolored Scales. Um, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may make your opponent's active Pokemon burned, confused, and poisoned. The Trifecta. Jeez, that's yeah. I love I love affecting my opponent's Pokemon with special conditions. That's 
I'm I don't just, know. That's just, just my just favorite. Like, imagine this. <laughs> imagine this butterfree in real life, which would just be freaking terrifying. Being burned, Listen, confused, I... and poisoned. <laughs> That that was how I like raised my my OG Butterfree in yeah. like blue version. Yeah. I would I'd be like, here's a sleep, poison, stun powder, <laughs> like all <laughs> all the powders. I'm like, I'm gonna put you to sleep. I'm gonna poison you. <laughs> oh goodness, a lot of fun back in the day. Mm -hmm. I I need that in uh in Scarlet and Violet so I can catch things easier. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and that's fun because then you can like, you know, you scoop up that you do it again. Yeah, um, and then there's also Salazzle. Ooh, Salazzle! What does Salazzle do? Um, I'm trying to find the right one. It's from oh. Battle Styles. Ah, Battle Styles. I thought we were talking about the Sun and Moon Ultra Prison one. Just kidding. Not so, that one. Number twenty-eight from Battle Styles. Has the it's a stage one salazzle has the attack for double colorless derisive roasting, ninety damage times each special condition affecting your opponent's active Pokemon. And the easiest two are poison and burn. Yeah. So basically, you can play the weeping bell, put the special conditions down, attach the double colorless, and do one hundred and eighty, and then they take three. Well, a, and a then twin. Flip you, there's no double colorless. Well, yeah, twin energy. I mean, yeah, double turbo. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, 180 plus the three from burn and poison. That's 210 damage. That's nothing to uh, to look past. Nothing to sneeze at. Nothing to sneezler at. No. Have oh, yeah, seen... and then you could drop the Hisuian Sneezler <laughs> and add two more damage counters. Oh, gosh. That's brutal. Have you seen this Venomoth from um, uh, Silver Tempest? Silver Tempest? I'm looking at it now. Miracle Powder, 30 damage. Flip a coin. If heads, choose a special condition. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now affected by that special condition. So the only correct answer to that question mm -hmm. is choosing Paralyzed. You don't mm -hmm. want them to retreat. You don't want them to attack. You don't want them to do anything. You don't want them to be confused? No. <laughs> they can just retreat and get out of it. <laughs> Paralyzed, they're stuck. But I don't. I don't think I would use this because there's like its secondary attack doesn't do anything. It's mm -hmm. seventy. Like it's just it's just not good enough. It's not strong enough. Poor Venomoth hitting on Venomoth. It's a bug. Squash that. Uh Let's like see. Like Weeping Bell is better than the Venomoth. No. Because you can just play that with the Salazzle and do, like, imagine having Venomoth and Weeping Bell and being like, oh, well, I could poison, burn you, and paralyze you. Or would you rather have Salazzle and do 180 plus damage? <laughs> okay, probably. <clears throat> now, have you seen this Pyroar number 29 from Lost Origin? has the ability Scorching Aura. During Pokemon checkup, put four damage counters on your opponent's burn Pokemon instead of two. It's like Sneeze Lair, but for burn. Ooh, I like that. Imagine playing both of them. This attack isn't great, so you're really just... You're really just using it for the Scorching Aura. So... Yeah, honestly, that's... you could play like a... I, I don't like one one lines yeah. in this in this I era. I found out about this card because I was trying to build a fire GLC deck, and uh, and when while doing that, I was like, oh, I'm already using a lot of burn. Why don't we just dig more into the burn? Yeah, honestly, if you could mix this with the Salazzle, with the Weeping Bell, and with the Hisuian Sneasler. <laughs> Because oh, yeah. this stacks. This stacks. If you could have, yeah. if you run a two-two of this, you get two of them out. Oh, 
and then you have the sneezler, and then even if you just get the burn and the poison, you're <laughs> you're doing so so much extra damage for nothing. Like you're literally just I'm mm-hmm. gonna play Weeping Bell, and then I'll use Scoop Up Net, bring it to my hand. <laughs> yeah, sounds like uh, you had a craft a deck here. Yes, yeah. Now I'm 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 very uh, my creative juices are flowing. I think that's Flowing. that's probably my favorite thing about going back and forth with you, Justin, mm-hmm. is that when I talk to you, you're like, hey, look, what about this card? What about that card? And it's just like, honestly, sometimes it's like, okay, that's that's a lot of cards. But then other times it's like, oh, my God, that blows my mind because mm-hmm. that's something that I could use with this card and use this card. So thank you, Justin. That's mm-hmm. uh, that is a card that is burned into my into my retina now. Bazinga. Maybe it's just my, my light here. Oh, yeah. oh you know, <laughs> either one could be burning it. Yes. Now, what, hmm, is something like a Carnivine two week. It's a basic with 90 hit points for a single grass, festering saliva. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned and poisoned. And that's all it is. That's all it is. And then its second attack is two, double colorless. But that's down just for 40. one energy and. Defending Pokemon can't retreat. Yeah, so you, like you could like guarantee it's burned and poisoned, but you know it's an attack. You really want it to be an ability, so. Yeah, but. Hmm. But that puts that inflicts both special conditions. You minus all of the space from the from the weeping bell. So get rid of weeping bell. You don't need weeping bell anymore. Mm-hmm. You play four of these, so you save sport four spots in the in in where you would have weeping bells, mm-hmm. or you know three or something. I don't know how many spots you save. This gets the attack. Then you can focus more on having like a three three line of pyroar, or even like a four four. Like if you could get this your whole bench filled with pyroars. You burn a poison and a sneezler and just this guy out. Mm-hmm. That's now, gnarly. Maybe you could like use this while you're trying to set up your salazzle. Yeah, and you could have just like a small line of salazzle and just have that be the the thing that knocks you out. But I like that. I like that a lot. Very interesting, Mister Bond. Jeez, I'm gonna have to look at look at the stuff because. Now, there's some other ones that do burning, but it's not like the focus. So, like, Cinderace VMAX from Fusion Strike for GMAX Fireball for the fire and three colorless 230. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. So, you're really doing 250, but you know it's a big to commit to. But, you know, yeah. I thought I'd just mention it since it does burn. Um, where was it? The Heatran. Um, oh, that's why I didn't click. There we go. Heatran V Max does max heat burst with 180. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. So, okay. Yeah. There's, see, like, that's the thing. It's like the special conditions you want to be quick and efficient. Yeah, so like and it, where Butterfree can do all those, all those, it mm-hmm. lacks because it's a stage two. But Carnivine, it's one less condition, and it's only one energy, and it's a basic. So that has the higher priority. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think it's only a one retreat. That's not bad. Yeah. I'm gonna have to build the deck. I'm very, uh, I'm very excited right now. Oh. <laughs> I like, I just, I'm like. <laughs> Chopping at the bed, I'm like, okay, yeah. okay, Justin, let's let's go, let's go. I just yeah, 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 like, yeah. No, <laughs> there's, what I'm seeing here is all the exciting burden condition ones are like basic stage one, stage two. Some of like the double or triple prize Pokemon are really that great when it comes to special conditions. Yeah, let's see. Let's look at another one. I mean, Hisui and Typhlosion V for no energy does singe your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. It's kind of cool. Yeah, not good enough. Again, when you could have something that's one <laughs> yeah. prizer instead of two and burnt and poison, like it, it, Carnivine just hands down wins. 
Now, this is a stage two, but it's a Suian Typhlosion from uh, Asteroidians, number 52. They build a supernatural orb. You must discard a psychic energy card from your hand in order to use this ability. Once during your turn, you may make your opponent's active burned and confused. Yeah. Yeah, it's a stage two. It's just too slow. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's where the game's at right now. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really Scarlet hoping and Violet the X, we can get yeah. to... Yeah. I'm really hoping for that slowdown. I understand that we still have all these big basics. There are EXs that are basics that are going to be the forefront of the format until we get another rotation. But uh, I have high hopes. I'm very excited. Yeah. Now, we should also clarify, by slow, we mean the number of turns. Because right now, there's I'm playing some really slow games. But that's because it's Lost Box drawing 5,000 cards or, or Mew VMAX going through and, and I'm doing the same times. thing with Dialga. I'm like, Mew, look at the top five. Take that yeah, trainer. Yeah. You switch. Get another yeah. Mew. Look at the top trainers. Oh, grab Energy Search. Use Energy Search. Grab it. Oh, play Quick Ball. Go grab Greninja. Discard the Energy. Draw two cards. Mm -hmm. Oh, play this this supporter. Draw some cards. Oh, use Metal Saucer. Oh, use Metal Saucer. Yeah. Oh, use Scoop Up Net. Bring up the Mew. Play down Mew. Use Escape Rope. Use Mew. Just look at the top five. Grab another Scoop Up Net. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, um, yeah. I just give it back to people because that's what I want to do. <laughs> but, Justin, we are going a little longer than last week. So we uh -huh. are going to kind of quickly touch on building a deck. Oh, yeah. Um, the link will be in the description to the article that Justin shared with me. Um, but I just kind of wanted to go over, like, for a true beginner, if you don't know how to play, the the too long didn't read is you should play four copies of every card in your deck because that's the only way you're going to learn what those cards do. And you have the best chance of getting all those cards. So that's just my two cents before we start. But obviously there's ratios that we have to go over. Um uh, but first, you got to have an idea. Like, Justin, what's your favorite Pokemon? Arcanine. All right. There's a whole bunch of Arcanines. Mm -hmm. Luckily, you have a lot to choose from. You have the Hisuian one. You have the Hisuian V. You have the normal one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and then you're like, what's, what's your favorite type, Justin? Uh, my favorite type is... It ranges between fire and fighting. Okay. So can you make a deck with both fire and fighting? I don't know. Do you I think mean, that I'm there's sure a deck I that I'd have to like with Arcanine, do you think you could play like regular Growlithe and Hisuian Growlithe? Yeah. You know, just have you could, all you of could the make yeah, you could make a deck work. Mm hmm You know, it's just you also you just want to have fun. So because you're building a deck to learn how to play the game. So you want to have fun. Mm -hmm. That's that's the most important and number one rule in Pokemon is to have fun. That's a throwback. <laughs> a deep cut, if you will. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, what do you like to do? Do you like to affect special conditions? Do you like to just do a ton of damage? Or Ooh. do you like to, to like slowly build up so you can have things that do... 10 damage. Next turn, this attack does 100 extra damage, but it's low energy cost for potentially a greater outcome. Or do you just like some crazy strategy where your your goal is to, like Lapras, your goal with that with um, Frostmoth is just to dump a bunch of energies from your hand onto your water Pokemon. Like you just got to find something that you really enjoy and then roll with it. And once the idea is laid out, you can start to have fun. Uh -huh. um, and a deck consists of 60 cards. It's a mix of Pokemon, trainers, energies, and just kind of going over some of those things. You can only have four copies of a card in your deck, unless otherwise stated. Amazing rares, you can only have one copy of each amazing rare in your deck. Or Radiance. is it one? It's Radiance. No. 
you know, I know, but amazing rares. You can have as many as you want. Okay. Wait, you can have four amazing you have four. rares? Yep. Really? Oh, no one plays four, but you can have four. Oh, okay. <laughs> so radiant rares, you can only play one per deck. Back in the day, these were Pokemon gold stars. So if you're familiar with the past formats and stuff, you'll understand if you are familiar with like the sun and moon era, these are prism stars. You can only have one copy of a prism star in your deck. And that's it. Just one prism star. Now, how Pokemon, much energy do you think you should have? Um, energies, honestly, for starters, I'd say anywhere from 13 to 15. Yeah. Because you yeah. want to have energies in your opening hand period. Now you'll see some of these like super streamlined meta decks that play like as few as I've seen seven energies or you get the crazy ones with the special energies that only play four. And then uh, I like, that's I like, like a super... consistent 11. That's like yeah. uh, my sweet spot. So when I see a deck and it's like most of the lists are running 11 or 10 mm -hmm. to 11, I'll opt to run the 11th energy over another card in the deck, unless yeah. it's an energy same, search. Same. Yeah. I, I tend to go one to two energies over what the the meta list is. Um, and in this article, it talks about you know standard format, expanded format. I'm not going to get into expanded because I don't personally play it. I have never played it because it's not something that if, if you're looking I to enjoyed. get in, if you're looking to get in and play with people, don't get into expanded. I'm sure you could have fun with expanded, but just not enough people play, and it's harder to find. People say like, "Oh, I have these old cards. When I just start out with expanded, it's just like, but just no one wants to play it because like it gets broken. So just play standard." Yeah. And there are special energy cards which we were discussing earlier, like Twin Energy, which counts as two. Double Turbo again counts as two, but if it's attached to a V Star or a V, it's the attacks are minus by twenty damage. And then also keep in mind what cards are legal. So for standard right now, it's D block onwards. And so if you look at these cards, it's like for example, I have this Magnuson V star, um, in the bottom corner, the bottom left corner, there is a symbol or there's a letter. And so it's letter F on this card. So this is part of the F block. Oh, I like that Magnuson. Yeah. Thanks for sharing and showing yeah. that. <laughs> and um, so like F block being, you know, 2022, E block being 2021, D block being 2020. So the D block is going to, you know, rotate here at the end of March, beginning of April. And then we'll, we'll officially be in, what is it? G block. Yeah. Yeah. Very excited. Very excited. Anyway, this rotation. On. But yeah, so double turbo, I th I, it's not just Vs. It's uh, as long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, provides double colorless energy. This attack, the attacks of this Pokemon that this card is attached to, do twenty less damage to your opponent's Pokemon. So that's the double colorless energy that we have right now. Yeah, in format and um, effectively. You can only have four because these are unique named cards. Whereas like any of the basic energies, you can have 50 of those. You can mm -hmm. have 60 of those. Just well, kidding. You, can't you, have have, you can only have 59 because you have to have a Pokemon. Yeah. But yeah. that is a very not fun and not cool thing to do. Yeah. You might get yelled at for doing that. So <laughs> now, the article also talks about evolving Pokemon. We start out with the basic. So... That could be, be like down a, for a, turn. a basic single prize sobble, or it could be a uh, Drapion V. Let's both say basic in the top left. Correct. Uh, it does go over the weaknesses as well, saying how like water's weak to electric, fire's weak to water. It's just going about the whole rock, paper, mm -hmm. scissors. Now, what this article doesn't do that I w wish it did, it doesn't like break up into like the weird ones. Cause like it says dark is weak to fighting. I mean, not always some dark is weak to grass. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. That's so, why I just said the basic, because yeah. <laughs> there are so many different other weaknesses I like and this, in this game, like we have terrestrialized Pokemon. Are those weaknesses different? I don't know, but they could be. Wait, and, don't we know? 
I, well, I mean, I, I haven't, I don't have it right here in front of me, so I can't <laughs> tell you, but I, I think they're still the same the okay, ones that have been released. It's only been two. Yeah. But still like there's different versions of Pokemon. Like what is the Arcanine that is the Hisuian one? What's that week to? I think it's grass. Okay. Now is the fire one week to grass? No, it's weak to water. Okay. And it's like on here it says fighting Pokemon are weak to psychic. So it, it it's that's not solid. That's not set in stone. Weaknesses can change. Uh it talks about trainer cards. Supporter cards are different. Supporter cards are cards that you can play once per turn and only one. And they're cards like Professor's Research, discard your hand, draw seven cards. That is a big gain there's boss's orders grab something from your opponent's bench and bring it active back in the day gust of wind it was just a trainer it was broken yeah one they, thing uh, i wanted to mention it down. is in pokemon you plan on playing with your whole 60 cards in a given match that doesn't mean you're actually going to play a certain card but you should theoretically have access to your whole deck at any point I mean, not at any particular time, but throughout the match. That's like, hey, you know, you have a good deck. Now, if you're just like, you know, drawing one card each turn and you're just not really seeing that many cards in your deck, you probably need some more draw engines. Yeah, and it's one of those things where I would suggest like four hops or whatever, Galar or Hisuian friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. Four of the draw three supporters, four potions, four switches. Just... Mm -hmm. Cards that let you do stuff that that in the game, it, it like causes you to move the move the game around the game mm -hmm. board. You're forced to move your active with something on your bench. You're forced to draw cards. You're forced to get a bigger hand without any like repercussions. It's not Avery. Draw three cards. Discard your bench down to your opponent's bench to three. Draw three with Bird Keeper and mm -hmm. then switch. Like none of those extra things. You just want the bare bones and to have fun and to have like mm -hmm. very simple deck. Yeah. There's, um, there's stadium cards and they those just go kind of like in the middle of the, of the board mm -hmm. and those affect both players. So yeah, Path so of the Peak stops all Pokemon with abilities or V yeah, or Training anything with a rule box. Allows you to get energies out of this card. Collapse Stadium makes it so you only have or Pokemon on the bench instead of five. There's a bunch of different ones out yeah, there. Yeah, and the training court has actually lost me a match because I played it to grab an energy for myself to attack, mm -hmm. not realizing that my opponent just needed one energy, and then they just mm -hmm. grabbed it from the bench, from the discard and then played it down. So it doesn't always benefit just yeah. you. When you're first starting, think about yourself selfishly, and then once like you get the hang of it, worry about you know, what your opponent's doing. Yeah. Like if your deck does not play any Pokemon with rule boxes, you can just play four path to the peak and just hopefully you, uh, you win in that <laughs> win and shut them down. <laughs> um, and then items, probably the these most are important tool category. cards. The, these are things that get attached to Pokemon. These are your Pokeballs, your great ball, ultra ball, quick ball, and upcoming quick nest ball. Upcoming next ball. Uh, and it's just one of those things where it, you use the like quick ball. Discard a card from your hand. Go search your deck for a basic, basic Pokemon. That's big. Ultra ball. Discard two cards. Go search your deck for any Pokemon. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It could be an Evolved. It could be a VMAX. It could be an EX. It could be a V. It could be a Radiant Rare. An a Amazing Rare. It could be anything. Yeah, there's so much. It just like, has to be a Pokemon. Card discarding right now. It's kind of funny. Yeah, there's stuff yeah, like it, switches, energy switching, air balloon to uh, make your retreat cost less. Other fun items you think of that are pretty common. There, uh, you, you can get choice, like there's choice, choice belt. belt, you know, to do that adds 30, 30 damage. damage to any attacks that attack a Pokemon V. There's things like um, energy search to search out a basic energy in your deck. 
Um, Adam's favorite crushing hammer. Flip yeah, a coin, flip a coin. If, heads, if heads discard a uh, discard an energy. energy. Yeah. Um, there's things like rescue carrier, bring some Pokemon back from your discard if they're under 90 HP. Ordinary rod, shuffle in any there's combination. like the ultra ball I was talking about earlier. Uh, lost vacuum, put one of your cards in the lost zone. If so, you can put a tool or a stadium from your opponent in the lost zone. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cool items. And uh, we'll link to the description. Well, the link of, to this article is going to be in the description because there's a lot of good information. But again, just take it with a grain of salt because not everything is set in stone. This isn't like end all be all. There is mm-hmm. wiggle room everywhere because uh, it says it talks about like deck ratios and stuff. And it's like, what should you have? And it's like 20 Pokemon, 30 trainers, 10 energies. And just like Justin and I were saying, if you're just starting out, you definitely want 15 energies. You want to be able to use your attacks. Mm-hmm. And as far as your favorite Pokemon, you don't necessarily need all these tech Pokemon. You don't need like a Manaphy to protect the bench. You don't need um, Dunsparce to make your colorless Pokemon no, have yeah. no weakness. Like you don't need to worry about that stuff because you're just trying to build a deck to learn and have fun. You're trying to learn how to play, not... Mm-hmm compete at the like the highest level you know so yeah and you'll notice most people like me say you go up to them like hey you know i'm learning to play as uh, here's a deck that i made i'm sure the average bert the average trainer is just glad to help be like oh hey here's what i would do here's uh, how I'll play. yeah they're like okay so you take out all of those pokemon and you put in a 4-4 line of lugia and then uh (laughs) (laughs) i've had that i've had that happen it'll be 80 dollars, please please poke over the money yeah, and uh, I'll trade you that. Uh, oh, you've got a Mew Star from uh, Dragon Frontiers. Yeah, just trade me that. I'll trade you the the Lugias. And that's, yeah, that's okay. An even wait, trade. wait, date yourself there. Yeah, that's an even trade. I mean, it's only like a five hundred dollar card. No, no worries. Um, oh, did I say that out loud? Don't check TCG player. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, Justin, there there's a lot on this article, and we are very over our time, so yeah, we will have fine. to cut it short. I apologize to everybody that was getting excited with this. Um, but we did, we went through a lot. We had, uh, the printing story that I, I honestly, I ruined it with that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what happened. But, uh, you know, we, we talked about Orlando regionals, ended it with a little bit of deck discussion. Um, we talked about the burn special condition, had a lot of fun there. Burn. Um, yeah, we opened some packs. We got the full art or the gal- gallery Nautica. training. Like, I still can't believe I got this. It's such a good so looking good card. looking. It's so good looking. That's that's like a really good pull for me. I'm very excited about it. But uh, okay, yeah, is that a wrap? That's a wrap. Let me uh, let me just look here. You can email us any questions you have. If you're building a deck and you want some help or advice or have any questions, please email us special conditions at PokemonProfessor.com. You can leave us a voicemail. You can text us, send us a picture, 732-835-8639. And Justin, do you have anything else to add to that? Nope. All right. Remember, trainers, if you're affected by a special condition, don't forget to use a full heal. Good night, or morning, afternoon, evening, Eh. all the above.